Uh, good afternoon, everyone. We're taking steps to hold accountable those who weaponize disinformation to undermine our democracy. That's what we did just last week when the State Department, the Justice Department, the Treasury Department, the FBI took a series of coordinated actions to counter Russian influence and interference in our elections and in our democracy. In addition to imposing sanctions, visa restrictions, and other measures, the State Department also designated the Russian state-funded and directed media company, Rosia Segodnya, and five of its subsidiaries, including RT, under the Foreign Missions Act. As part of RT's expanded capabilities, the Russian government embedded within RT a unit with cyber operational capabilities and ties to Russian intelligence. RT's leadership had direct winning knowledge of this enterprise. Russian government actors incorporated the cyber capabilities of this unit within RT in the spring of 2023, which is focused primarily on covert influence operations around the world. Under the cover of RT, information produced through this unit uh, flows to Russian intelligence services, Russian media outlets, Russian mercenary groups, and other state and proxy arms of the Russian government. Today, we're exposing how Russia deploys similar tactics around the world. In Germany, for example, RT covertly runs the Berlin-based English language platform RED, a successor to the now defunct RT link platform Redfish. RT also secretly runs the online platform African Stream across a wide range of social media platforms. Now, according to the outlet's website, African Stream is, and I quote, a pan-African digital media organization based exclusively on social media platforms, focusing on giving a voice to all Africans both at home and abroad. In reality, the only voice it gives is to Kremlin propagandists. We're imposing sanctions on three entities and two individuals for Russia's covert global influence operations, including interference in Moldova's democracy and its upcoming elections. The actions we're exposing today and the actions we exposed last week do not uh, uh, incorporate the full scope of Russia's efforts to undermine democracies. Far from it. We're rep Russian weaponization disinformation to subvert and polarize free and open societies extends to every part of the world. In response, today, the United States, the United Kingdom, and Canada are launching, uh, launching a joint diplomatic campaign to rally allies and partners around the world to join us in addressing the threat posed by RT and other machinery of Russian disinformation and covert influence. Under the, uh, using, excuse me, the, the internet, intelligence diplomacy uh, has become a hallmark of our administration. Uh, I've instructed U.S. diplomats around the world to share the evidence that we've gathered on RT's expanded capabilities and the ways it's being used to target individual countries and the information inf ecosystem that we share. Now, each government, of course, is going to decide how it responds to this uh, threat. But we urge every ally, every partner, to start by treating RT's activities as they do other intelligence activities by Russia within their borders. Now, let me be very clear. The United States respects and champions freedom of expression, even when it comes to media outlets that wittingly spread government propaganda. And we'll continue to lead the world in defending and promoting media freedom. But we will not stand by as RT and other actors carry out covert activities in support of Russia's nefarious activities. Our most powerful antidote to Russia's lies is the truth. It's shining a bright light on what the Kremlin is trying to do under the cover of darkness. Taking action, together with our allies and partners, uh, to address this threat to our democracies is an effective way pushing back. And today, we're taking an important step in that direction. Происходит попытка подмены понятий, потому что речь не идет о разрешении или запрете киевскому режиму наносить удары по российской территории. Он и так наносит с помощью беспилотных летательных аппаратов и другими средствами, но когда речь идет о использовании высокоточного оружия большой дальности западного производства, это совершенно другая история.
наносить удары современными высокоточными системами большой дальности западного производства украинская армия не в состоянии. Она не может этого делать. Это возможно только с использованием разведданных с, со спутников, которыми Украина не располагает. Это данные только со спутников или Евросоюза, либо на Соединенных Штатах, в общем, с натовских спутников. Полетные задания в эти ракетные системы могут, по сути, вносить только военнослужащие стран НАТО. Украинские военнослужащие делать это не могут. И поэтому речь идет не о том, чтобы разрешать украинскому режиму наносить удары по России этим оружием или не разрешать. Речь идет о том, чтобы принять решение о том, что страны НАТО напрямую участвуют в военном конфликте или нет. Если это решение будет принято, это будет означать не что иное, как прямое участие стран НАТО, Соединенных Штатов, европейских стран в войне на Украине. Это их прямое участие. И это уже, конечно, существенным образом меняет саму суть, саму природу конфликта. Это будет означать, что страны НАТО, США, европейские страны воюют с Россией. А если это так, то, имея в виду изменение самой сути этого конфликта, мы будем принимать соответствующие решения, исходя из тех угроз, которые нам будут создаваться.